This is our regular Streaming Wars segment where we talk about things that are going on um, in the worlds of, world of all the different uh, streaming services, all different kinds of interesting news articles and items actually coming out um, with all different kinds of uh, aspects in terms of how it would affect actually the Streaming Wars. The Streaming Wars, of course, directly affects all of us in terms of our pocketbook if you're actually trying to keep up with everything. Um, I'm actually getting to the point where I'm going to have to start making some choices. <laughs> and, Same here. And cutting, Same here. Cut, cutting some people off. So, um, so I have actually uh, for the show. Uh, if you don't mind, Eric, I think I might lead off since my screen is already up, and I am going to I think lead off with this one. Uh, so this is a story that was actually on Variety. And it says, Netflix reveals all the TV shows and movies it's removed because of foreign government takedown demands. Oh, yeah. Tell I, me about this. Yeah. I, I just thought this was really interesting. Um, so this is by uh, Todd Spangler. This, of course, is on Variety. And it says, Netflix disclosed for the first time the movies and TV shows. It has, wow, thanks for doing that. God, these ads, I tell you, they're just a bit much. <laughs> Netflix disclosed for the first time the movies and TV shows it has pulled from its streaming service at the behest of governments as part of a new transparency report. The nine titles which Netflix removed between 2015 and 2020 include a single episode of Patriot Act with Hassan Minja. Uh, apologies for I mispronounced that pulled in Saudi Arabia after the government demanded removal of the segment that was critical of the regime. The company said the nine cases are the only ones it has ever yanked content, has ever yanked content because of censorship demands since it began streaming in 2007. Other titles purged by Netflix in individual countries included Five in Singapore Alone, The Last Hangover, The Last Temptation of Christ, Cooking on High, The Legend of 420, The Disjointed, or, or, and disjointed, and in 2017, Netflix pulled George Romero's horror classic Night of the Living Dead in Germany because the film is banned in that country. So I'm not going to read the whole article here, um, but again, you can find this on Variety. I thought it was interesting, um, just in the just within the concept of, um, I guess we could call it censorship. Um, censorship is one of those things that we don't think about how it's going to affect the streaming wars. But depending upon where you watch content and what things you can or cannot get access to, we have talked about how that's going to affect the streaming war. So if you can't watch something you want to watch, you're less likely to subscribe. I just thought it was a really interesting uh, kind of thing to talk about in the streaming wars because I I understand the foreign governments wanting things removed, you know, and I understand the concept of censorship. Uh, but I just thought it was kind of an interesting thing for those people that are curious to look into it. But again, this was on Variety. Had you heard about this, Eric, that Netflix was taking things down because of censorship? Not until you you brought brought it to my attention. Uh, this is something that I think has been underreported and is very much on uh, you know kind of under the radar uh, right now. Uh, th this is a bad precedent, I think. Um, it's uh, you can understand why they do it, uh, but I am I am never someone that is for censorship. I'm sitting there scratching my head, like, why, why the heck does Germany not allow Night of the Living Dead? I mean, that's pretty tame by today's standards, you know what I mean? I'm trying to think that there's no, like, Nazi imagery in it or anything like that. I, but why would they ban that? But anyway, I guess that's sort of a side point. But, uh, yeah, you know, anytime uh, censorship happens, I'm not really for it, you know what I mean? I, I, I believe very strongly in the concept of free speech, which means even if I hate everything you're saying, and I can tell you I hate everything that you're saying, I still, you know, defend you with my life, the right for you to say it, you know, um, that that's just my my stance. That's what I think free speech is all about. Um, so um, it's it's a little uh, concerning. Uh, Saudi Arabia in particular has has been uh, has been pretty bad with a lot of uh, uh, censorship and things like that. They have a history of that. Um, and my understanding is it has escalated under the current regime, under the, the, the current regime right now in, in power in Saudi Arabia. Um, it's actually a great documentary about that, that I think, gosh, I, I'm, I'm going to mess it up. I, I can't remember which network did that, but there was a, there was a network that did a, a pretty good documentary a few months ago about, about everything that's going on in Saudi Arabia. And Saudi Arabia is a important player in these things because they do, um, they do put money into this stuff. 
you know, so uh, it's interesting when you see the, the links between some of these countries and entertainment, because it's not just about the size of the market. For instance, China is the, you know, the second largest uh, film market in the world, uh, besides the United States, North America. So um, th they obviously have a great deal of influence in, in that regard. And there have been uh, controversies in China, but in China, generally, they just don't show the movie. They're not going to ask you to make changes. They just ban your movie and they just don't right. let it be shown, you know? So yeah, it's, it, it's going to be a bigger issue. And the thing with the streaming wars, uh, to tie it back in, into the streaming wars, um, the thing is that a lot of these streaming platforms are domestic. CBS All Access is domestic right now. Disney Plus yeah. is only, I think, just barely. It, I don't even know. Has Disney Plus even gotten to any new territories yet, officially? I, I think we're still know, like I mean, a month away or something like that from Europe or something like that. Like they, they're still, or they just got, or they just started. Because when, when Disney Plus started, they, they were not in the UK. Right. They were not in France. They weren't in, the, the only uh, country they were in was, uh, I believe, the Netherlands, because that was one of their test markets, which is kind of funny. I don't know why that was, why they decided that as their test market. They actually got Disney Plus before the United States. But most of uh, the European countries uh, didn't. And as far as I know, most of them still don't have Disney Plus. CBS All Access basically farms out their content internationally, so they're, they're not even involved in the international distribution directly. Like uh, they, Picard is through Amazon, and um, Discovery was through Netflix. So it's going to be kind of interesting what how the how the international market affects um, the streaming wars, and and also apparently their content. Are they going to be sensitive about the fact that are they going to make different versions of all their of content that that's offensive, quote unquote? For this regime or this culture or whatever, or are they going to straight up just not have that content and try to make content that is going to be um, acceptable all over the world? And then you kind of wonder what what's that going to do to creators and all that kind of stuff. So it's a dangerous precedent. It's, a, it's what I would call a, a slippery slope. Yep, for sure.